Welcome everyone to my walkthrough for Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishments. As I'm sure that you've concluded by now, we will be solving a series of crimes uh, playing none other than Sherlock Holmes himself. Each crime only has one correct solution, um, but the choice to whether condemn or absolve the culprit is left for us to make. Um, apparently they're paying a tribute to the victims of the Ukrainian conflicts in 2013 and 2014. That's a really nice of the game developers, for sure. Um, but as I was saying, there's only one correct solution for every case that you solve, and the game will let you know if you don't have the right solution. Um, but if you want to open the correct solution for each case, you can follow my walkthrough. I will try my best to show you all the evidence, uh, documents and solve every puzzle uh, in each crime. So if you're stranded at a, in a certain crime or in a certain uh, part of, of the game, then you can follow this walkthrough and we'll solve things together. And by the way, Sherlock Holmes never said, Elementary, my dear Watson. That's just a misconception that apparently a lot of people have. So we start by playing as Watson. Uh, this is really simple, we just have to hide in the couch, uh, then behind the table and then we go behind Sherlock Holmes and that will trigger another cutscene. As you concluded this is played, uh, the, the time period of this game is uh, the same as the Stop original home. books. Is that you? So late yes, 19th century. And you almost killed me. Nonsense. I was aiming for the vases. So you won't see Quiet Benedict folded. Cumberbatch anywhere on this game. Watson, quiet, please. I'm trying to concentrate. We're already seeing that our Sherlock Holmes' mind works. He's a genius, just like. Ah, well, Lestrade. any portrayal what of Sherlock Holmes time? ever. He can see me. Well, here it is, and it's a good one, Mr. Holmes. A gentleman by the name of Peter Carey, also known as Black Peter, has been murdered. A sailor, most probably. What happened here? Oh, Mr. Holmes, how Mrs. could you? Mrs. Hughes. It's the only exercise I've had all week. A grateful client from Limoges sent me a vase collection this morning. I couldn't think of a better use for it. You're out of your mind. I missed four out of ten. Given you were blindfolded, that was very good. Can I have a try? Am I the only sane one here? I suppose that Watson is right, Inspector. A little oh, brain work would be preferable now. Do please tell us more about Black Peter. Peter Carey, born in 1845 and 50 years old. An ambitious sort, he achieved much success in seal and whale hunting around Scandinavia. Retired in 1884 with a small fortune. He invested his money in a property called Woodman's Lee, near Forest Row in Sussex. It was where he lived for six years, and where he was found dead yesterday. Has the investigation already begun? Yes and no. In fact, this crime is so mysterious that I would prefer you to join me down there. Give me half an hour to prepare, Inspector. Take your time and join me there. I have to go through the yard first. The many men struck again. What have they done this time? They robbed a powder reserve. I'll meet you at Woodman's Lee, Mr. Holmes. I should help Mrs. Hudson here. I also have several appointments that I must keep this afternoon. I shall go alone then. So the first thing that we need to do is get Sherlock Holmes dressed. He can't go out in his PJs to solve crimes, that would just be absurd, of course. Um, this is our uh, notebook where we gather all of the evidence, so if you need to check anything at any time, you can come and open the book and check things here. Um, it gives you information that you've collected, as well as basic information on the victims and all the suspects and so on. We're going to enter Sherlock Holmes' room and put on a suit. Unfortunately, right now I can't put on, a, put on any fake beards and mustaches, 
I need to unlock those upgrades, but we'll do it sooner or later. Uh, I do recommend that you guys play this game, if not for the sole purpose that it's the kind of game that forces you to think. Like I said, like like I said before, you need to solve puzzles, uh, gather evidence, and you need to have a keen eye and observe everything. So it's. It's a game that's a little different than most games out there. Um, and it's refreshing to play this type of games. Um, so I invite you to, at the very least, join me as I solve all of these crimes. And as always, like I said, if you need any help, my walkthrough is here for you. So as we step out, we will open our book and we will select um woodman's lee uh, location and we will automatically travel there i will say one thing this game has uh, pretty long loading screens so i will try and cut out most of them since they do take a little bit but while you travel you can always check your book for any information that you may need to find So here we are at the I'm scene of the crime. So let's join up with the inspector and we will talk with the wife of the victim, Mrs. Carey. And we can ask her a series of questions as well as inspect Inspector Lestrade, when uh, the surroundings in order to make our first conclusion. As soon as we can, Mrs. Carey, I assure you. Allow me to introduce you to Mr. Sherlock Holmes. He's a detective. No doubt you've heard of him. I'll wait for you in front of the cabin, Mr. Holmes. My condolences, Mrs. Carey. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. So we can ask a series of questions. I recommend that with every you character you ask uh, as many questions as possible. Body? In the morning. At around seven o'clock, I noticed the cabin door was open, but I didn't go in to take a look, for I knew my husband would not have liked it. At around ten o'clock, I dared to glance in through the door and... Oh, dear. So just ask all the questions uh, until there are no more options Madam, left. can you tell me if you saw or heard anything unusual upon the night of the murder? At two o'clock in the morning, I heard a terrible scream, but I thought nothing of it then. He would scream all the time when he was drunk. Was your husband accustomed to receiving visitors? Oh, no, I don't think so. I mean, he didn't really have many friends. He lived quite an isolated life here, after his retirement. Can you please I don't think she got along very well with her husband. The murder? Well, Peter got drunk in the evening. He was in such a terrible temper. Usually whenever that happened, he'd stay all night drinking in his cabin before passing out. Ah, that typical uh, late 19th century husband, huh? So as you press the square button, you can inspect uh, the person you're talking to in a little bit more detail. And as you can see, there's uh, white fading letters on the screen. That means that there are five things that we can inspect for uh, on Mrs. Carey. The first is that um, pendant that she has. As we go down, I promise uh, I'm not checking her out. That would be creepy. Um, we can see that she has a rosary, that means she's religious, important information. There's also a book, uh, a pair of gardening gloves, which seem hers. Um, so would that mean that she's the one who takes care of the garden, maybe? And as we move up, there's also the 
birdhouse on the table, which you can see right here. Whenever you can interact with a piece uh, of the environment, uh, the circle will you have uh, shine blue. A great loss, Mrs. Carey. Nevertheless, I believe it will be less of a burden for you soon. Yes. Life with Peter was never easy, but he was still my husband. He was different, wasn't he, when you first met him upon your return from Plymouth? Yes, Mr. Holmes. Oh my goodness, but how do you know about that? Because of your rosary, of course. She's religious, so she went on a pilgrimage. You undertook a pilgrimage to the Cathedral of Santiago de Compostela when you were young. That much is evident from the rosary in your hand. The shortest route for the pilgrim from England to Spain is from Plymouth. I believe that you met Peter Carey as a young sailor there, and you married him soon afterwards. That is indeed what happened, Mr. Holmes. How extraordinary. Thank well, you. I wouldn't be able to deduce that far, but pilgrimage, pilgrimage seemed the only viable option. So as we head down, we are going to investigate uh, the footsteps by the entrance of the cabin in the garden. So we end through here and we're going to select the special view mode. And we're going to inspect the footprints. These footprints appear to so be quite just large. Click on them to examine them. And now we're actually going to get inside the house where the murder happened. This will trigger a cutscene. The door is locked. Wait just a moment, Mr. Holmes, and I'll open it. I locked it yesterday to ensure that no one should enter the cabin and tamper with the evidence. Ah, good thinking. Hello, hello, hello. What is it, Lestrade? It seems to me that someone has tried to force it, Mr. Holmes. Let me see. Why didn't you keep a policeman at the door? So you can notice as you inspect the door lock that there are These scratches. These scratches are fresh. So that means that someone obviously tried someone tried to get in. Door. I swear these scratches were not here yesterday. Now a mysterious visitor came here last night. Well, he's not the man for the job. This lock is not a difficult one. Perhaps he did not have the right tool. Yeah, or maybe he's just not good at it. So we're going to head inside the cabinet. Oh boy. Uh oh what a terrible way to die not a very pretty sight let's start by investigating uh, Peter Carey's body and all the evidence that surrounds him it might it would seem that maybe some this, the person who killed him has quite a lot of strength this man is in his check. 50s Yet he still looks quite strong. I suppose being 50 uh, fully in late 19th century would actually surprise. be a good thing. It is possible that he knew his murderer. The weapon fully penetrated the body. The force of the blow was immense. Let's Peter investigate the harpoon now. By a whaling harpoon. So, like I said, it would seem that the person who killed him would have to be fairly strong. Now we're going to examine the pool of blood. And we're going to check out the knife and then the notebook. This wooden hand Always rotate items to make sure that you don't miss anything. This blood is from the pool underneath the dead body. Peter Carey tried to defend himself with this knife, but he did not succeed. Yeah, if we only we had CSI here, 
we'd be able to solve this car crime a lot faster, apparently. JHN are probably the initials of the owner of this notebook. Yep, that's not PC, that's for sure. And there seems to be blood in the corner, so we're going to investigate that as well. J. Hmm. The pattern of the blood stain indicates that the notebook was not lying on the floor prior to the crime, but it was dropped into the pool of blood after the death of Peter Carey. Quite interesting. And now we're going to open the net notebook. There we go. All initials, maybe? It would seem so. These abbreviations mean something, but what? Peter Carey's initials aren't there, though. So the now let's check Nicole. the wall. She was the ship that Peter Carey commanded. Always check everything. Uh, even if it seems unimportant, you should always check everything. And now we're going to check the table where we're going to solve our first mini puzzle. Someone drank from this glass recently. Rum. Maybe two people drank drink. from it. It seems that Captain Carey was enjoying a drink before he met his death. Someone drank from one last drink recently. Ah, if only we had CSI, really, that would make things so much more simple. So this seems to be his tobacco pouch. Have been crudely burned. A sailor's work. So as we turn the the tobacco pouch around, we can open it and we will solve the first mini puzzle of this game. What we need to do is match uh, mm, the two elements, familiar, tobacco leaf and the smoking to pipe. It, pipe. I must construct um, my associations in one picture. As you can see, a part of the boat is on the leaf and part of the boat is on the smoking pipes. pipe. So we need to uh, match them um, in order to complete this little puzzle. puzzle. Uh, first things, you need to rotate it to an angle of 180 degrees so that the leaf is on the right side and the pipe is on the left side. And now what you need to do is uh, manipulate the three elements so that they match up. Uh, so the leaf corresponds to the back of the ship um, and the pipe corresponds to the front. Uh, and you want to move the pipe up and down so that uh, the lines from its bottom are attached to the prow. Um, and the white stripe of the leaf uh, should be uh, matching the, the stern of the ship. Um, once you've matched it perfectly, and this might take a while because you do need to put them precisely in the right position, uh, the boat will uh, shine yellow. So that's how you solve this mini puzzle. Like I said, it can take a little bit. Uh, like it's taking me. So it's fairly, it's a fairly simple puzzle. I mean, you understand what you need, you, what you have to do. Yes. But like I said, it this can be a little bit tricky to position it right. Very popular among sailors. So that's how you reach that clue. And now we're going to take a look at. The murder weapon was chest on the floor. This rack. Uh, inside we will find Peter Carey's boots. And we will take them obviously for evidence because we can match, try and match them with the foot, uh, footprints outside. Old navigation instruments, nothing interesting. Old navigation instruments, nothing interesting. Let's get the boots. Peter Carey's boots. They look to be a size 8. Hmm. 
And now we're going to inspect the other side. For the years 1878 to 1884, Peter Carey was her captain. I'm not ready to reach any conclusions right now, that's for sure. Let's check this desk. The tooth of a sperm whale. Probably from one of Peter Carey's... Not a desk, a shelf. As you can see to the right side, there's uh, a space where there's no dust. That clearly indicates that there was something there. So enter your special view mode to investigate it. This place is not covered with dust, like the rest of the shelf. An object was taken from here. It was larger than a book, a box or a small chest, perhaps. Like I said, you have to have a keen eye and observe everything. Hammerfest. Dundee. It's a whaling map. Makes sense. So now that we have uh, investigated everything here, let's step outside and see if the boots uh, match the footprints on the floor. These boots don't they don't seem the to match. And let's talk to his wife again. See if she knows anything about the matter and if she can give us a little bit more information. You can inspect the garden as you go. It seems that seems the very well kept. Well maintained. Just like I said, Sherlock. Uh, I still feel it's the wife that does most of the work on the garden. Plus those gardening gloves are uh, lady gloves, I think. Once again engage in all conversations possible. The garden is very large and well maintained. Do you employ someone to look after it? It is true, Ooh, there is a lot of work, but my husband took care of it himself. I think you took care of everything. Is this your husband's tobacco pouch? I'm not sure. It might be. But he hadn't smoked in a very long time. Your husband's private papers. Do you know where they are? There was a small tin box, barely larger than a book. He kept his papers there. It should be somewhere in his cabin. Thank you. Well, not anymore, because that was stolen. So now that we've gathered, gathered enough evidence, we can make our first deduction. So obviously we have the notebook, which let us know that there was some a suspect there and the notebook belongs to our suspect and it might be related to the breaking attempt. So we're going to select that option as well. Um, since they seem to be the only two solutions that actually match at this point. Um, those are the two matching clues like I said you can match the wrong clues but the game won't necessarily tell you you will just Someone reach a different conclusion yesterday. they attempted to force the door to gain entry so we've completed the task uh, and now we have to organize an ambush for the person who's been trying to get inside. Um, keep in mind that uh, I believe that regardless of your choices, you will always try to do this ambush. So let's talk with the inspector once again. Well, Mr. Holmes, what do you think? I think that we are lucky. And why is that? Because of last night's attempted break-in. Oof, you've lost me. It is very probable that whoever came here hoped to find the door open. They tried to force it with a knife blade, but they failed. What will they do? 
Akwai return tonight, when they will be better prepared. Aha! So what do you propose? We shall remain Wouldn't on the they know there would be the police window, where we stand uh, the best around here at this time? Of our visitor. Well, gentlemen, ready your pistols. We have a long night ahead of us. Yeah, because you just think that he wouldn't come knowing that there's police, uh, the police is here and so on. But, oh well. So we're going uh, to the back of the cabin and this interact with like the window the to trigger place. Uh, a cutscene. Again, I'm going to cut out the loading screen. And it's time to see if our suspect appears. I'm really surprised you wouldn't see us, but oh well. Did you hear that? There's someone there. I'm gonna collar him. I'll be right behind you. Police! I'll get right there. So now we just have to follow the inspector. And here we have our suspect. All right, my fine fellow. Who are you and what are you doing here? You're detectives, I suppose. You imagine that I'm connected with the death of Captain Carey. I assure you I'm innocent. Innocent? And what are you doing in his cabin? Shall I tell you? You came to retrieve what you had lost after killing Peter Carey. But we were here waiting for you. What is your name? John Hopley Nelligan, but I... I didn't. Do you deny well, that, that you matches came the notebook. Today? No, but, but I. Yes, it, it's just that I couldn't. I'm tired of this. Off we go to the yard. Tomorrow. His I'll hands are completely busted. What? But you can't. I'm not. It's a terrible mistake. Enough. You can explain all of that to the judge. You're coming with me to the yard. But. In light of recent events, it seems evident that your coming here was unnecessary. All the same, I'm very grateful to you. Actually, I think this is far from over. You are welcome, Inspector. But please, the guy could just be the gardener for all fellow. we know. I would like to question him tomorrow morning. So that's going to do it for this first segment. Um, I hope you guys follow this series and that you find it intriguing. It's a really interesting game. So as always, thank you so much for watching and look forward to new parts rather soon. I'll see you all later.